the Eucharist, God's embrace of its many faces. And I want to begin with, with a story. It's a Jewish parable. It's a Jewish parable, but to me, it, 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 it captures Eucharist better than several long courses I took on Eucharist. I went through seminary, and I went through two different graduate schools, and at each level, I took a major course on the Eucharist. And after three major courses in the Eucharist, I have decided that I don't understand the Eucharist. <laughs> but it's okay. That's what those courses taught me. The Eucharist isn't meant to be understood. Why not? Well, this is the story. There's a famous Jewish parable. They say, once upon a time, there was a young Jewish boy called Mordecai. Beautiful Jewish name. And when it was time for Mordecai to go to school, he was six years old, his mother and dad took him to school, and he refused to stay there. And he came home, wouldn't stay at school. So his mother and father tried to reason with him. They tried to explain to this young boy that at six years old, all children have to go to school. You know, his time at home is over, and he wouldn't listen to them. And his mother would take him back to school each day. As soon as she left, he would go home. If she took him back, he'd go and play on the swings until it was time to go home. But he wouldn't stay in school. And so the parents did what many parents do in situations like that. They tried various combinations of bribes and threats. You know, if you stay in school, we'll buy you a new bicycle. If you don't stay in school, you'll be punished in this and this way. But nothing worked. And finally, in desperation, the father went to see the rabbi. And he explained this to the rabbi. He said, we have this young boy, Mordecai. He's six years old, but he refuses to go to school. And we try to reason with him. But he won't reason with it. He won't listen. And the old rabbi said, if the boy will not listen to words, then bring him to see me. So the father went home, brought the young boy, took him into the rabbi's study, and the rabbi said to him, not a single word, not a word. He picked up the young boy and he held him to his heart for a long time in silence. And then he set him down, and afterwards there was no further problem. Mordecai went to school. In fact, he went on to be a scholar and a great rabbi. Now, what does that parable tell us? And what has it got to do with the Eucharist? Well, the parable tells us this, that there are times when words no longer have power. Notice this, that the rabbi said, if the young boy will not listen to words, then bring him here. And when words no longer have, have power, we still have another kind of language, which is the language of ritual. The Eucharist is a ritual, but the most primal, timeless, archetypal ritual of all time is the ritual of the embrace, to kiss somebody, to touch somebody, to hold somebody in an embrace. That's a ritual, and it says something that words can't communicate, and something's given that words can't communicate. More than any other image, that is your image of the Eucharist. See, the Eucharist simply put, is God's physical embrace. The Eucharist is God's kiss, and that's why it's physical. And notice when it, when it was instituted. Like, we'll celebrate Holy Thursday in a couple of days. And notice on Holy Thursday, it's Jesus instituted the Eucharist the night before he died, when all his words were exhausted. So he had been speaking for three years. And he had been trying to teach and cajole and challenge and words, words, words. And they were more or less effective and more or less ineffective. And when the words have stopped, when there's no more words left to say, but something else needs to be said, something else needs to be given, then he gave us something else. And that's why it's a sacrament. And it all doesn't matter whether you're Roman Catholic or any denomination, the whole essence of a sacrament is it's something physical. You cannot have a sacrament where there isn't something physical in it. Remember as a young child, and I don't want to blame the sisters because they did a good job on this, but uh, I was catechized by the Ursuline sisters back home, and they used to tell us on days when you can't go to the Eucharist, you should make a spiritual communion. Well, what's wrong with a spiritual communion? Nothing, except the spiritual communion is a little like an imagined kiss. It's not much. Okay. <laughs> okay. See? See, kisses are powerful precisely because they've they got to be physical. See, in the Eucharist, God touches us in a physical way. So Andre Dubas, the, the writer who's the father of the present Andre Dubas, who wrote that fine book, The House of Fog and Sand, but his dad was a very pious Catholic going to Mass every day. And he used to say, he said, without the Eucharist, God becomes a monologue. 
See, we have words and we have Eucharist. And uh, the Eucharist is God's physical embrace. So I took three courses on the Eucharist, didn't understand it, but what I understood is that it doesn't need to be understood. You now, if somebody used to tell my students, if, if somebody writes a 400 page book and it's called The Metaphysics of a Kiss, don't buy it. You know, <laughs> it, it, it can't explain a kiss and embrace, it works. It has a power. That's not, not intellectual. You can't extrapolate the, you know, the, the intellectual dynamism of this and explain it. You know, that's the whole purpose of ritual. Ritual just works. The Eucharist is a ritual. It's God's physical embrace of us.